Hello everyone and welcome to Boundless Dentistry. In this video, we'll talk about space gaining methods. Basically, there are certain indications in dentistry where there is lack of space. For example, in crowding, proclination of anterior teeth, rotation, space discrepancy. So when this is the case, we go for methods to gain space. So we'll talk about gaining space in this particular video and different methods used to gain space. So let's get started. Now what is the main objective that we are trying to achieve in gaining space? Basically there is tooth material and arch length. So when there is mismatch between the tooth material and arch length, it results in some discrepancy. And when this is the case, there is some crowding, for example, rotations and teeth are proclined. So these are particular cases that a doctor encounters when there is space discrepancy in a patient. Now, what are the indications for space gaining? Firstly, there is crowding, anterior proclination, impacted canine, leveling of curve of speed, and constricted arch, in particular crossbite. So, when these are the particular scenarios encountered in a patient, so these are the indications for gaining space so that these all indications can be corrected. Now, it's not necessary that all of these are present in a particular patient. For example, in one patient we, have, we can have crowding, another we can have impacted canine and so on. So when any of this particular indication is present, we have to go for methods in order to gain space. Now talking about the primary methods that are used to gain space, firstly there is proximal stripping, arch expansion, extraction, distillation of molars, uprighting of tilted molars and finally derotation of posterior teeth. Now these are the different six methods primarily used to gain space and we'll talk about them each of one in detail. Now firstly talking about proximal stripping as the name suggests the proximal surface of a tooth is reduced and this results in decrease in the mesiodistal dimension of a tooth. Now what are the different indications in order to perform proximal stripping? Firstly, there is mild excess of tooth material, that is the tooth is larger than the arch length. This is according to Bolton's analysis. Second is in order to obtain favorable overjet and overbite. These are the two primary indications in order to perform proximal stripping. There is to reduce the proximal surface of a tooth and in finally achieving decrease in mesiodistal dimension of a tooth. Now, there are also certain contraindications in order to not perform proximal stripping. Firstly is young patients. In young patients, the pulp chamber is large. So in that case, when you perform proximal stripping, there is chance of exposure of pulp. Secondly, patients who are at risk of caries. Thirdly, patients who have poor oral hygiene. And lastly, patients who have enamel hypoplasia. In these four contraindications, we do not perform proximal stripping. The four basic instruments that we use to perform proximal stripping is diamond proximal strips. As you can see in this particular picture, these strips are used proximally to reduce the mesiodistal dimension of a tooth. Second, we have carbide and diamond burrs, which are also used to reduce the proximal surface of a tooth. Then we have diamond disc, as you can see in this particular picture, to reduce the proximal surfaces. And finally, we have leaf cage. These are the four basic instruments that are used in order to perform proximal stripping. Now, talking about the second method that is used to gain space, and that is expansion. Expansion is basically performed to expand the arch, which in most cases is constricted. That's why there is deficiency of space. Now, there are three basic indications to perform expansion of the arch. Firstly, there is crossbite, that is abnormal labiolingual relation of the teeth. Second, we have mild crowding. And third, we have skeletal class 3 malocclusion, in which the mandible is prognathic and the maxilla is retrognathic. Now there are two basic methods that are used for performing arch expansion. First is the rapid method and the second is slow. Now talking about rapid method first, in rapid expansion mostly fixed appliances are used and the four basic appliances that are used to perform rapid maxillary or mandibular mostly maxillary expansion is the first, the rapid maxillary expansion appliance as you can see in this clinical picture which is used to expand this constricted maxillary arch. Second is the Hyrex appliance, which can be either bonded or banded, as you can see in this picture, which is banded type of Hyrex appliance. Third is the Dirichlet type expander, as you can see in this particular picture, which is used to expand the arch. 
and the last is has type expander which you, should, you can see in this particular clinical picture so these are the four basic rapid expansion fixed appliances that are used for ex expansion of maxillary arch the second type of appliance that are used to gain space are the slow expansion appliances and these are mostly removable appliances now this removable slow expansion appliance mainly consists of split acrylic plate there is a midline screw that is present and there are retentive clasps now these slow expansion removable appliances are mostly useful and beneficial for the patient when they are used in early mixed dentition phase now there are three appliances that are used for slow slow expansion firstly there is coffin spring as you can see in this diagram second is quad helix which is present here and last is night eye expander which you can see over here so these are the slow expansion removable appliances that are used for ex expansion of maxilla now moving on towards the third method that is used for space gaining and that is extraction now extraction as the name suggests some teeth are extracted in order to gain space and extra extractions are mostly performed when there is tooth material arch length discrepancy as we have discussed in two other methods before also now extractions are mainly performed when there are some impacted teeth ectopic teeth and there is no space and crowding is present and there is measly migrated teeth as well now what is the criteria for performing extraction if according to carey's analysis there is 2.5 to 5 mm crowding present then we extract second premolar and if the crowding is more than 5 mm then we extract first molar so these are the analysis according to carey's analysis and these are applicable for lower arch now why do we mostly extract first premolars and why they are more preferable mainly in upper arch it is because it is closer to the anterior segment and when first premolar is extracted the space is beneficial for both anterior and posterior teeth both anterior part and the posterior part they can be adjusted when first premolar is extracted and first premolar is also aesthetically less important as compared to second premolar and when the first premolar is extracted the second premolar can be used for anchorage in order for retraction of the anterior teeth these are the four reasons as to why first premolar is mostly extracted as compared to second premolar now moving on towards the fourth method of gaining space and that is distalization of molars now as the name suggests the molars are driven in a distal direction in order to gain space to perform distalization of molar the ideal time is basically when there is mixed dentition and before the eruption of second permanent molar now to perform distalization of molars there are two methods either we take an extraoral approach or we take an intraoral approach firstly talking about extraoral approach basically we use head gears for this particular method now you can see in this diagram this is your molar and we exert a pressure in this direction which you can see by this arrow in order to distalize this molar now talking about intraoral approaches there are four basic appliances that are used in order to distalize the molar firstly there is sagittal appliance as you can see in this diagram next we have pendulum appliance which you can see over here jones jig appliance which you can see here and last is the transpalatal arch appliance these are the four basic appliances that are used for intraoral approach in order to distalize the molars to gain space now moving on towards the fifth space gaining method that is uprighting the tilted molars mostly when the deciduous molar for example e is lost there is tendency for the first permanent molar that is the tooth number 6 to tilt mesially as you can see in this diagram th this is the e that is lost mo in most cases prematurely and there is the tendency of this sixth which is the first permanent molar to tilt mesially and when this is the case there is chances that the space is lost so to gain space we use different types of appliances first is uprighting spring which you can see in this picture in order to make this molar in the proper direction and second is space gainer you can see in this picture this is a space maintainer in order to prevent mesial tilting of this molar now lastly talking about derotation of posteriors now when there is derotation as you can see in this particular picture which is not normal so when this is the case the space that it occupies in this case is 11 to 12 mm and when this derotation is performed in order to have the proper alignment of this molar you can see now it takes 10 mm of space previously it was 11 to 12 mm and now it's 10 mm so 
uh, the effect of rotation is that space is gained so in derotation of posterior the alignment of the uh, molar is corrected in order to gain space and the appliances that are used for derotation of posterior teeth is fixed appliances which has springs or elastics so in this video we talked about different space gaining methods starting from proximal stripping expansion extraction distalization of molars uprighting of tilted molars and then finally we talked about derotation of posterior and these are the basic methods in order to gain space when there is space discre discrepancy so i hope this video was useful for you and if you like this video please like share subscribe and press the bell icon thank you for watching this video see you next time